My subject tonight is serving the gospel. And uh, uh, so God has uh, commanded us to do something. He saved you uh, from something for something. Um, we know that uh, in uh, Ephesians 2.10, it says that you are his workmanship uh, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. And uh, the Amplified, of course, is really good. It says that, that um, you would take paths that he prearranged for you to take. Um, uh, so we know that the scriptures are, are very clear uh, that each and every one of us have been created for something very specific and uh, something uh, that would obviously be connected uh, to the gospel of Jesus Christ, okay? Because literally the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. So it is the gospel that brought you out of darkness into this glorious light. And so everything basically that we do once we've been born again is in service to the gospel. Okay, so the gospel being the power of God unto salvation, which actually, uh, you know, is redemption and, and includes healing and, and preservation and all these details are a part of the gospel. It's hard to separate one from another, uh, but it seems like we as believers, we, we who have been saved and been walking with God for a little bit, we don't really have a problem with the fact, or we shouldn't have anyway, uh, the fact that the gospel redeemed us from hell. That's where we were all headed for. We all deserved uh, the punishment of hell. That's, you know, we earned that. You know, the wages of sin is death. And we, we earned our wages. We worked for it, and most of us. Anyway, some worked harder than others, I realize. But it, nonetheless, all have sinned and all fall short of the glory of God. And so we don't have a, a problem recognizing that the gospel redeemed us from hell and death. Would you all agree with me? Everybody in the room who's a child of God believes that. You're like, Psh, yeah, hey, <laughs> whoo, boy, am I thankful. Woo, glory to God, hallelujah. You know, we're all going to enter into heaven. Some of us smoking, you know, like, woo, wow, I just made it. But some of y'all are just like angels carrying you, you know, oh, you know, chariots, all the good stuff like that. You know, I know Lamborghinis over here in this section, but whatever it is, you guys are going to rock into heaven and, uh, and just be thankful. And we don't have a problem. We don't argue uh, with, with uh, that we are redeemed from hell and that we have been made alive spiritually. This happened from the gospel. Isn't that right, you guys? We usually don't have a problem with that. Isn't that right? Uh, but when it comes to the things that the other things that took place because of the gospel, it seems like there's this argument we got in our brains. Isn't that right? Argument with healing, argument with prosperity, argument with those things that came with the same program. In fact, your greatest problem wasn't sickness and poverty. Your greatest problem was spiritual death. But yet you don't have a problem. You accepted that really cool. You were like, I know I'm alive. And you couldn't, and rightfully so. I knew when I was made alive. Anybody else you knew? Oh, man, I knew when I was born again. I knew it. I knew it. And I was so thankful. And tears, you know, snot, all of it. You're like, <laughs> whoa, I was going to hell and I'm not now. Glory to Jesus. And I sure deserved it, let me tell you. And, and you spent a little bit of time thinking, wow, I so deserved it. Whew. But I'm so grateful and humbled that he bought me from that horrible place. Praise God. And then you grow in the Lord and you start finding out all the other benefits, all the, the cool stuff. It wasn't just spiritual death he took care of. He took care of sickness. He took care of disease. He took care of all that stuff. I can go on. Confusion, right? Oppression. He took care of it. Hallelujah, I don't have to walk in that stuff no more. And I used to uh, have to smoke weed and do drink and, and chase a girl. I used to have all kinds of things I'd try to do to quiet the voices and shut this, all that, the noise up. But when I got born again, it shut them down. And I, I mean, I don't need it, but I like a popsicle. And you could just have a, a popsicle on the back porch and go out your mind now because Jesus has set you free. I'm not addicted to popsicles, but you got to do something, you know what I'm saying? 
just enjoy yourself. Cup a cup of coffee on the back porch and don't have to snort, shoot, smoke, drink, chase it, jump it. You don't have to do none of that any longer because you are at peace with God. But I'm telling you guys that, that healing came right in with it. And we, as children of God, are now indebted that we serve the gospel according to the will of God. That's why I'm still in this body, is a servant of the gospel. And I really believe that when we start coming out from ourselves and begin to recognize how to serve the gospel, then a lot of stuff will start falling off, dissolving, and not have such an impact in our lives anymore. Do you understand, you guys? We start forgetting about ourselves. Glory to God. I know we're kind of far away, but I'm going to say turn at some neighbor and say forget about it. You forget about it. And the enemy's trying to keep you locked up so you don't serve the gospel. The scariest believer for Satan is the servant who serves the gospel. If he can get you into other things, get you busy in other things, then he's got you right where he wants you. But I'm talking about serving the gospel according to the will of God. In Matthew uh, 28, it says this. It says, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and in earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And so Jesus is saying, Lo, I am with you always. So he's going to be with us. This doesn't mean he's, you know, like white men don't jump. That's not low, you know, low I am with you always. That's not what that means. It means I am with you. I will not leave you. I am going to go with you whenever you go out into the community and minister the gospel. I'm with you. I am with you. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we're carriers of all of it. It's interesting when I go to, uh, I've gone to uh, third world countries and minister the gospel, and we tell them that God wants to break you out of lack and poverty. Isn't that part of the gospel? Absolutely. And we tell them about healing, and then we minister healing life to them. Our youth that go with us, they'd be like, Pastor Andy, Jesus just healed this guy, that this tumor, it, it came out from under my hand, Pastor Andy. I'm like, yes, praise God. Had one of our youth workers ran a guy around. I think he did 30 laps. I, I, I just was ministering people. Notice he'd go by every little while. <laughs> well, he was lame and he could walk. Because of the power of the gospel. Jesus said, go into all the world. Preach the gospel. You don't have to go to Peru. You don't have to go to Honduras. You don't have to go to Africa. You just start this right here in Las Vegas. Amen. Take the gospel and the healing power of God. Take it to your community. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, my goodness. If somebody just grabs hold of this, praise the Lord. I mean, these guys had so much going on that, that even in proximity with Peter, people would get healed in the, in the area of his shadow. You think, wow, that's pretty cool. I wish I lived in those days. Listen, we've had all kinds of crazy stuff happen in our generation. I don't know if you all know who Amy Simple McPherson is or Mary Woodworth Etter, these different things. People like that, they would be having meetings. People would fall out under the power of God in a 22-mile radius, crying out to God to be saved. Amazing things have taken place. In our day, I was talking to some missionaries, and, and they were telling me that um, in Indonesia, um, just a long story short, is, is they had killed, beheaded one of the missionaries. And it was their habit not to allow um, a, a person to body to be like that. So the guy was sewing the guy's head back on. And he came up off of the... This is in Indonesia. And the same missionary, he said, he said, he said they had chopped a guy up. 
I kid you not. And this guy was in heaven, I guess. Right? Yeah, where else would he be? He's a Christian. He's a missionary. But anyway, so, so he's hanging out. And Jesus said, you got to go back. I'm not done with you. Yeah. Again, though, they gather everything together and put it in one place. And boom. Why are you guys looking at me like, whoa. Does anybody remember any stories in the Bible? When God did something with just bones? Do you know that those bones were not together? God raises up armies. Listen, we got to quit putting God in a box, you know, and, and start doing the work he's called us to do, serving the gospel. These people did not count their lives precious. They went to places where their life was in danger, and they took their life. God gave it back and said, get back out on the field. Can you imagine playing football and getting killed? And, and your coach saying, you big baby, get up. And get back out on the field. It's like, I'm just having a little bit of a moment. I just died, all right? This is my first time. <laughs> Can you just work with me here? I'm trying to get myself together, you know? God said, get back out there. There's more to do. Praise God. He's looking for fearless people. We can't be afraid of their faces. We can't. We can't just be like, oh, what if I get rejected? Oh, my gosh. Man, we hope they do. I'm telling you, we just hope that they're like that. You know, like, woo, glory to God. Spit on me. You can condemn me. You can do whatever you want. And, and I don't know if you realize that Peter and them, they rejoiced when they were counted worthy to suffer persecution. But yet we just keep silent. But here Jesus, he, he says, all authority is given to me. And now this is what I want you to do. And that must mean that each and every one of us can do it. Number one, each and every one of us are called to do it. And each and every one of us can do it. And we can do it with greatness. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In, uh, this is what um, James Madison said, who was uh, the fourth president. Um, he was actually considered the father of our Constitution. He said this. He says, we have staked the whole of our political institutions upon the capacity of mankind for self-government upon the capacity of each and all of us to govern ourselves, to control ourselves, to, to, to sustain ourselves according to the Ten Commandments of God. Whew. Jesus said, go into all the world and teach them to obey these things that I have commanded you. So we are going out there preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, discipling people, telling them about the Lord. I run into Christians all the time, Christians, right? Christians that are doing all kinds of crazy stuff. And it's like, well, you hypocrite. Well, look, they probably just weren't discipled. That or they're just backslid. But you know what? Our job is to bring them back to God. Amen. Amen. So God's calling us to, to shake off the fear, shake off the intimidation, and, and rise up on the inside and, and stop, of course, just uh, constantly, what about me, what about me, and come out of ourselves to reach out to people that are hurting. Reach out to this world. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And uh, uh a uh, pastor had asked me to share um, a little bit about um, uh, reaching out, ministering the gospel tonight. And then he, he had the audacity to preach my scriptures this morning. I'm sitting on the front going, really? <laughs> I was like, all righty then, pastor, thank you. No, I told him about it. He, he's like, oh, wow. You know. So anyway, we're going to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And uh, I'm... Coming at it from a little different angle. In uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 9, it says, Therefore, whether we are at home on earth, away... This is, by the way, this is the Amplified Bible, you guys. The Amplified Classic. 
says, therefore, whether we are at home on earth away from him or away from home and with him, we are constantly ambitious and strive earnestly to please him. Everybody say, I want to please God. Verse 10, for we must all appear and be revealed as we are before the judgment seat of Christ so that each one may receive his pay according to what he has done in the body, whether good or evil, considering what his purpose and motive have been and what he has achieved, um, been busy with and given himself and his attention to or accomplishing. So God is actually, we are going to stand before God, you guys. Uh, I'm just, I'm just want to challenge everyone in the room. We're going to stand before God. Literally, one day, we are going to stand before God. And most likely, it's going to be you. It's going to be like mano y mano. You and God. Does that make sense? And, uh, and, and uh, what our knee-jerk thing is on earth right now is, well, that's what everybody's doing. I'm just acting like everyone else. But we will stand before God and give an account for ourselves and what he created you for and the purpose and the plan he gave you to fulfill and what that plan is, he will reveal to us as we go. Isn't that right? And as we take steps towards him and move in it, then we get more revealed because his word is a lamp to our feet, a light to our path, not a nuclear bomb to our future. So it's, it's learned as you go, right? But you have to go in order for that to happen. And so being mindful of a purpose, being mindful of the plan, a specific plan for each and every one of us individually would mean that it's us. We have to discover it. We have to learn it. And you're here in church on a Sunday night. And so you guys are definitely right there at the top of the list. But I tell you what, it's more than just being in one place. Is it being in all the places? And so getting tonight blessed with the word means that we carry it way with us and we go into the community and we are to do something with it. And so we want to know what that is so that when in that moment, I want to stand before him and not just have a couple of things with me. You know what I'm saying? Well, you know, I got, I got this and that, you know, he's like, great, praise God, you know, but we want to be able to take our crowns with rubies and all that and lay them before him. Isn't that right? And that these are all to your glory. These are all to your, uh, you know, to your praise and your worship. That you did this in and through me. And I'm so grateful and honored to be able to have served the purpose that you created me for. If there's any great thing that you would exercise your faith towards is, is am I walking in the steps that he prearranged? Is, is God directing my path? Am I, am I doing what he has asked me to do? Or am I running around in circles producing nothing that he has asked me to do? But I'm running around doing what the world thinks is cool and what's acceptable to my, my particular people group or whatever the case may be and not fulfilling what God's called me to do. And sometimes there's hard decisions that have to be made in order to do that. Hard decisions about relatives, hard decisions about blood, hard decisions to be made about your people you've ran with and, and the things that you have thought in the past and the things that you have allowed in your lives that you have to start working at cutting some of those things off because it's those things that might be holding you back from going to the next level into the next step to produce fruit for his kingdom. And I tell you what, there's so much involved in this. I just have to be honest. And, and, and speaking about uh, representing God and sharing the gospel, I just have to be honest. I don't always feel like talking to people. Man, you know what I'm talking about, Steve? Because sometimes people just, you know, it's just, it's, it's just a lot. And if you're not feeling well or you're tired, you know, you just, you, you know, sometimes you're thinking, I'm, I, I think I might just say the wrong thing. Yeah, and you know when you, you've gotten like five minutes into it and you've already said, look, you know you're tired. You probably should, you know. <laughs> Has anybody ever said that to somebody? I know I was at a grocery store and uh, the lady was saying to the, you know, loud to everybody to hear. She said, well, you don't have to go to church. And she's a Christian. I know she's a Christian. And she said, you don't have to go to church. And... Uh, I don't know what happened. I, I thought it was the Spirit of God that came on me. And I said, <laughs> she said it loud enough for people to hear. I said what I was saying, saying so they could also hear the rebuttal. 
I said, do you believe the Bible? She goes, because the Bible believes in church. Jesus died for the church. So I'm not sure what philosophy you're coming up with here in this grocery store in front of all these folks here, but the Bible says that that's where God does his work and his business. So no, you don't have to go to church. You don't have to eat. You don't have to sleep. You don't have to breathe. But some of those things are pretty important. <laughs> and then, you know, then you shake it off and you're like, oh, wow, that was rough. I can go take my little groceries and go home now. <laughs> but to me, that is God, the savor of his knowledge that just happened right there. The smell of God just happened. A confronting foolishness right there in the midst of the grocery store. I've prayed for people in grocery stores to get saved. I've prayed for them to get healed. I've, I've, have, I've, I think I have a ministry at Costco, I'm telling you. Go there. Of course, the gym y'all know about. I'm just, wherever I go, I believe God is taking the gospel there in and through me and administering it on all of its various forms and fashions. And, and words of knowledge, words of wisdom, words that, that, that people uh, about their lives that I say to them that only God would know. See, God wants to do that in each and every one of you. Don't think that's just for people that are in the fivefold ministry. Every believer can flow in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Where would that take place when you're sharing the gospel? Praise the Lord. Let me get back here. Where are we? Verse 11, 2 Corinthians 5, 11 says, therefore, being conscious of fearing the Lord with respect and reverence, we seek to win people over to persuade them. But what sort of persons we are is plainly recognized and thoroughly understood by God. And I hope that it is plainly recognized and thoroughly understood also by your consciences, your inborn discernment. So being, being sensitive to God is going to play out in you being sensitive to winning people to Christ, not just running around breathing, eating, taking protein, working out, and getting buffed. Now, I, I do like to work out. My first motivation for working out was I, I was trying to um, get rid of a, a tummy I had developed in my earlier years of the Air Force. And then it became a place of ministry, and it became um, more of a, you know, a lifelong necessity if I was going to maintain some kind of a meaningful shape, if you will. And so God has helped me to do that, and I'm thankful. I'm there at the gym thanking God. Thank you, Lord, for health in my body. Thank you. And then I'm sharing the gospel there, so it's a place to share the gospel. Wherever I am, by the way, is a place to share the gospel, wherever you are is a place to share the gospel. So here, here we see in this passage, listen, this, this whole passage is talking about our ministry to and, and obligation to man of the gospel. So, so, uh, so in uh, verse 14, it says, for the love of Christ controls and urges us and impels us because we are of the opinion and conviction that if one died for all, then all have died. And he died for all so that all those who live might live no longer to and for themselves, but to and for him who died and was raised again for their sake. So his death and resurrection and your receiving of that into yourself changed your purpose. It changed everything about what you're here for. I want you to know. Do you understand? When you got born again, your main purpose is to win people to Christ. None of us can get escape from this. Listen, if you think, oh, you know, it's cool that Pastor Andy does that, Minister Darnell, Pastor David gets the pool guy saved and, and other people, you know, around his life, and that's just cool. They're pastors. I, I literally try not to bring it up when I'm sharing the gospel, just so you know. And so, so uh, eventually it comes around and they're like, oh, yeah, that's it right there, you know. But I'm telling you, it's not necessary. I, I preached and ministered the gospel to people before I became a pastor. It was just in me. As soon as I got saved, I was so thankful that God had set me free. 
And I, I loved people so much that I thought everybody must know about him because he's so amazing. And so I began to tell people what I knew. And, you, I, and, and as you do it, you just get better at it. And you, you, you begin to, to share things that you didn't know, and you start learning how to. And I, I've used the illustration of fishing before. Just like there are different fish, there are uh, different people and different groups. There's, there's little guppies that you can just scoop them up in the net, and they'll say, oh, easy. And then there are sharks that'll bite you. You got to watch it, you know? <laughs> And you start learning about all these things and how to help them, how to get them out of their bondage and into the kingdom. And 16, verse 16 says, Consequently, from now on, we estimate and regard no one from a purely human point of view in terms of natural standards of value. No, even though we once did esteem Christ from a human point, viewpoint and as a man, yet now we have such knowledge of him that we know him no longer in terms of the flesh. Therefore, if any person is engrafted in Christ, the Messiah, he is a new creation, a new creature altogether. The old previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away. Behold, the fresh and new has come. We pull this verse out of here, don't we? We pull this verse out of here because it's an in Christ scripture, who you are in Christ. I love this scripture. When I got saved, you know, used to sing songs about it, you know, that kind of thing, you know. Uh, you know, I, I'm, an, I'm a new creation. Remember that song? I'm a new creation. I'm brand new man. Old things have passed away. I've been born again. More than a conqueror. That's who I am. I'm a new creation, a new man. Yeah, and we'd sing songs like that. But look at when you pull this out of this, this context it's in, it's talking about our responsibility to do this for people. Is we, we no longer look at human beings as just these, uh, you know, uh, flesh bags running around the earth. We see them no longer in that way. We know people are spirit beings, and if they are not in Christ Jesus, then they are dead and they are going to hell. And if they can get in Christ, then they can be a new creature. And then the old things have passed away. Behold, all these things have become new. And God has done this for you, has done it for me. And when he did that, then he gave us the ministry, which we've been talking about uh, for a while now. In verse 18, it says, but all things are from God, who through Jesus Christ reconciled us to himself, received us into favor, brought us into harmony with himself, and gave to us the ministry of reconciliation, that by word and deed we might aim to bring others into harmony with God. Do what? That we might aim to bring others into harmony with God. Why are you alive? What are you living for? Out of the gate, our first thing is right here. Isn't that something? If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. And now and it rolls right out of that and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. I saved you, empowered you, now go get them. Go get them. And some of you are so amazing at doing this. But I tell you what, God's going to use this in a mighty way right now, I'm telling you. I'm, I'm, I'm empowering you. I want to empower you tonight. Not just, not just to be conscious of winning people to the Lord, but that you are a carrier of the power of God. That you're conscious of this. Jesus literally travels around with you, waiting for you to do things for him. Share the gospel and demonstrate the gospel. And so, so uh, moving right along, it says, It was God personally present in Christ, reconciling and restoring the world to favor with himself, not counting up the, or holding against men their trespasses, but canceling them and committing to us and committing to us the message of reconciliation, of the restoration to favor. So we are Christ ambassadors. Christ ambassadors. Whew. You know, we used to wear the bracelet. Anybody ever have one of those bracelets? What would Jesus do? I tell you what, I'll tell you what he would do. He would do what he did when he was here the first time. And he wants to do that in you. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Is there any sick among you? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
We just, we just believe God for the courage to do it. Some people need the courage to do just one-on-one. I'm, I'm, I'm believing God for the courage to grab the mic at the text stand and say, can I have your attentions, please? If there's anyone in the store who needs healing in their body, come to check stand four. There's a bald man there with a beard who wants to impart healing life to you. Jesus just walks into the store. Thank you. I'll see you there. Start a healing line at Albertsons. Walmart. Walmart will take you a long time. Make sure you have plenty of time. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Walmart is a great place to share the gospel and demonstrate the gospel. So, so we, see, we see here in verse 20, so we are Christ's ambassadors, God making his appeal as it were through us. So literally, God is inside of you. We're taking him to the world. Praise the Lord. And I just want to take um, just a few minutes um, because Jesus gave us instructions in Mark 16. In Mark 16, 15, and he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they shall cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents and they drink, and they, they drink anything deadly. It will, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will what? Everybody say recover. Praise God. In verse 19 it says, When the Lord Jesus had finished talking with them, He was taken up into heaven and sat down in the place of honor at God's right hand. And the disciples went everywhere and preached. And the Lord, who? Everybody say the Lord. The Lord Lord worked through them, confirming what they said by many miraculous signs. So listen. uh, So the Lord worked with them, confirming what they said. Oftentimes, we want confirmation of nothing. I just want God to do miracles. Well, listen, when you start preaching the gospel and give God something to work with, he will confirm the gospel with signs and wonders. Now, I, I, uh, I have to admit, I've, I've laid hands on dead people. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, you know, zero for however many times I've done that. I have not ever raised anybody from the dead yet. But I tell you what, I'm ahead of everybody else who have never prayed for a dead person. I was listening to a guy talk about this. He, he went uh, to hospitals, and, uh, and they discovered that he was doing what he was doing. He was laying hands on dead people, and they kicked him out, banned him, and, and actually had a restraining order from the hospital. So then he went to the morgues, and they busted him there. He had laid hands on several people, you know, and uh, uh, finally he'd laid hands on, you know, like 100 people, you know, or, you know 100 dead people, and, uh, and it wasn't long till boom, somebody came to life. And I don't know where my quota is, but I'm going to start building that quota up right now. I'm telling you right now. I mean, I've, I've, we were in uh, Honduras, and, and uh, there was a person who was shot and killed in the jungle while we were preaching the gospel that night. And uh, one of the, mo- the moms of the person who was killed was in our meetings. It's just horrible. So we go down into the jungle at night. I go down there. I say we. I did. Went down there, and uh, here he was. This guy's dead. And so I'm, I'm like... First of all, there's no medic here to check and verify he's dead. So I thought, well, let me check. You know, let me check his pulse while I put my fingers on his throat. Cold as ice. He dead. So I said, Lord, Lord, if you've ever done a miracle, this would be a great time to do one. <laughs> so I commanded him to get up, this, this boy who was shot and killed. And uh, I think he was a few degrees cooler after I laid hands on him. But he did not get up. So then I'm like, well, Lord, what do you want me to do here? What, what is it that you do want me to do then? And uh, I thought, well, I'll, I'll see if I can help this family. And uh, so our mission team, uh, we took up an offering and helped the family that, um, for the funeral. They don't have any money. It's a very poor area. So anyway, I'm just saying, I'm not going to quit because I didn't have a success there. And I'm not going to quit when I lay hands on people if they don't recover I was given the instruction to lay hands on the sick, and the scriptures say, and they shall recover. 
I'm the hand layer. God is the recoverer. So, so I'm going to believe God. And I've had many people come to me later and say, I want you to know that all the pain left my body when you laid your hands on me. I'll be like, praise God. That's awesome. Thank God. Because it's God. And you start thinking it's you, then you got some problem. You understand? Because it is God. It is the gospel working through you that does the work. We are just obedient doing what he said. Praise God. And he will heal, and he will show himself strong, and he will confirm the word. And so, um, uh, again, um, here in, uh, we're in the gospel of Mark. And uh, the Holy Spirit um, confirms the word with signs and wonders. Um, we're going to look at uh, uh, John chapter 14 and verse 12. John chapter 14 and verse 12. It says, most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father, and whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now, I don't know about you guys, that's pretty big. There's no limitations on that. In uh, uh, one uh, particular, P.C. Nelson uh, said that this particular passage, um, it actually should be translated, um, if you ask me anything and I don't have it, I will make it for you. <laughs> I thought, that's pretty cool, man. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. But we've heard of such miracles and, and signs and wonders of, of deformed children and their arms all twisted, legs all twisted, and mouths twisted, and, and whole bodies tore up in knots, and, and they have never spoken, they can't see, they can't hear, and all of it taken care of, boom, snap, pop, bang, crack, and they're, they're, they're walking across the stage and, and come out of it and their face straightens up and their eyes straighten up and their ears open and they begin to speak. I'm telling you, there's nothing impossible for God for those who believe. And if we will just go and we will do the work, we can, we can shut the mouth of unbelief in our own country. There's no reason why miracles should just work in South America, in Africa. There's no reason why we can't bring the power and the glory of God to Las Vegas where Satan has had such a great time. I believe that we, the children of God, we, the church here in Las Vegas, North Las Vegas, we believe that we are bringing God's glory. We are carriers of the glory and the gospel and the power of God is about to break out in the city. <laughs>